If you want to, I'm not hard to find, bud. But it better be one-on-one. Don't do that these Stockton stuff where you jump guys. And if you do decide to jump me, it better be more than f***ing four to five. Brendan Schaub's back at it again, making headlines for all the wrong reasons. What started out as a seemingly genuine effort to bring attention to a progressive degenerative disease that he suffers from himself, commonly known as CTE, or as Brendan likes to call it, SAT or just CT, it ended up turning into a back and forth between him and Nate Diaz on Twitter. But now, your boy took it a step further and delivered a staggeringly redacted hit piece on The Shorb Show, rife with all of our favourite Shorbisms. And I don't usually say this often, but working on these clips for you guys from Brendan's epic meltdown today was some of the most enjoyable work I've ever done on this channel. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely love slogging it through all the podcast cringe slop for you guys day in, day out, but every now and then I kind of feel like, you know what, this one's for me. This is the cream on top. It was honestly like a Shakespearean soliloquy. It had all our favorite Shawbisms littered throughout. He almost started rage crying at several points, and he mispronounced all of our favorite words with the skill and precision of a surgeon performing brain surgery after 20 beers. But this isn't the first time our boys had a public meltdown all alone by himself in his studio. Remember, uh, Chin, on Monday, I'll tell you about that. Steve will do it guy who went really bad on me. He was like defending Dana. And I, you know, I went dark a little bit how I can kill people. When it comes to hand to hand fighting, I will f you up. Unless your name's Francis Ngano, Gordon Ryan, Tyson Fury, I will f you up. And these are just facts. These are just facts. Now here's the thing, in my opinion, Brendan's actually right about almost everything he says in this video. For 99.99% .99 of the human population, Bapa's a problem, but the way he gets so easily triggered by guys who have made a good living out of trolling people is absolutely fucking hilarious. See, your boys had it tough. Over the past decade, Bapa's been catching L's like a fat kid on prom night. Almost everything he's tried, he's failed at, but not like normal fails. I'm talking really public, embarrassing fails, like Joe Rogan telling him he should quit fighting because he's not built for it anymore live on a public broadcast, to then become one of the most widely ridiculed comedians in the world, and then getting dropped and ghosted by Theo Vaughn, who went on to build one of the most wildly successful podcasts in the world, while Brendan was left to share the crumbs with a bunch of cancelled losers who get paid to laugh and be his friend. You guys know I could go on and on listing all of Bupper's seemingly endless failures, but that's not why we're gathered here today. I actually have a serious point to make once we're done laughing at Brendan's on-air meltdown this morning, so stick around to the end where I'll explain exactly what's going on here. Uh, I'm mean, going to jump right into it. Uh, some of you, especially the new viewers, you're probably tuning in. Oh, how's Brendan responding to Nate Diaz? Uh, not a long rant here. Um, I've, I've never had issues with the guy. So four minutes into the latest Chorb show, Brendan declared that he wasn't going to spend too long on this. It didn't really bother him anyway, you know, and he was only going to talk about it because his fans probably expected him to, as well as any new fans, of course, because we know bupper has got such a big reach these days that he's always fielding new fans. But after making this declaration, he went into a 20 minute uninterrupted rant, trying to convince us how tough he is and how he could easily snap Nate Diaz in half. Oh, and he doesn't care. None of this bothers him. Remember that. It's important. Luckily, though, he actually provided some context to this beef with Nate, which goes way back to 2017 when Conor McGregor fought Floyd Mayweather Jr., and I managed to find a clip of the interaction he's talking about here to give you the full context. For those of you who don't know, I mean, how long ago was that? I mean, when, when Conor fought Floyd, um, I was paid by Showtime, a little background there, I was paid by Showtime to sell the public that Connor has a chance. Now that he was gonna win, but he has a chance. That was my job, that's what I was paid for. I was the Connor expert, still am, love the guy, right? Hopefully he fights soon, probably not. Um, so that was my narrative. And I was leaving after doing my job and I was walking and the entire arena's pro Floyd, pro boxing, there was no familiar faces. So it's, it's not awkward for me because my Showtime boys are there, Brian Daly, everyone's there, and they're walking with me in the back. And I see Nate, and, and I'm like, oh, thank God, another UFC guy, alumni, yes. And I go to say what's up, and you just start talking sh You know, his, his own insecurities, I don't know what's going on there. That was a weird one. I disagree. Hey, Ray, hey, you tried, you didn't win four rounds? 
So I was like, all right, whatever. Uh, probably three weeks before that, ran into Whole Foods. It was cool. So that's why I was like, oh, another, you know, he's still cool. So, you know, he's like a rattlesnake, hot and cold. All good. None of that bothers me. Of course, none of this bothers your boy. That's why he decided to dedicate half his show to a single tweet from Nate Diaz. But as you could see from that interaction seven years ago, Brendan was the one who walked away saying he didn't have a problem with Nate, which to be honest was probably the mature thing to do and de-escalate the whole situation. Nate Diaz was probably just trying to be friendly or something. Who knows what goes through that guy's head. Anyway, so last week on the Shorb show, Brendan got all emotional when talking about his buddy's experience with CTE and how much it's affecting his life. This is where the whole Nate Diaz beef started up again. We used to laugh. God, we're idiots. We used to laugh because we'd get in our car and we wouldn't know how to get home Fuck. after sparring. We'd call each other and laugh. And thank God I'm all right, you know? Somewhat all right. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> who knows? You know, I talk for a living. I talk for a living. I do a lot of creative stuff, which I think helps me delay whatever's headed my way. Who knows? But when I talk about <clears throat> fighter pay and compensation, there's not enough money in the f***ing world. Like Vince McMahon. It's like, you remember Vince McMahon, that meme? He's all... Face serious challenges and meaning basic everyday expenses for food, shelter. <laughs> he has kids. Give me a break. So Brendan's heartfelt, emotional-filled dedication to his old sparring partner struck a chord with Nate Diaz, prompting him to share his thoughts on your boy's performance. He said, Brendan, the big old pussy shawb. Now, Brendan didn't like this, so he hit back with this. Oh, buddy, I probably got 20 pounds on you, so not too far off. I'll snap your neck. Set up a grappling match and let me know how it goes for you. Have one of your handlers read this tweet and get back to me. Okay, just quickly, why does Nate have to let him know how it goes for him? Like, wouldn't Bupper be there too? Isn't he meant to be the opponent? I just feel like Brendan would already know the result given he'd be the other guy in there. Anyway, sorry, I digress. Um, driving my son to baseball practice and um, a buddy or maybe my brother was like, oh God, here goes Nate Diaz again. I'm like, what? For what? And he put uh, Brendan the big old shop with a crying emoji okay um and this i assume and most people tell me that it's in response to me getting emotional over my friend of 20 years fuck me dead can somebody please explain to me honestly why does every brendan shorp story start with him either driving to or from baseball practice or being at a baseball practice or just being somewhere in the vicinity of a baseball game i don't get it b but finally we're in the thick of it now brendan's about to go into full flight and totally melt down over something that he clearly doesn't care about right but while you're watching i want you to picture this just imagine that Chin forgot to press record and didn't realize until they got to the end of this rant. Imagine. See, that's the type of shit I think about. Best brains be. Thank him. Wait, one more thing. If you put headphones on and listen real close, you can actually hear Chin bricking up as Brendan starts to heat up. I, I, I don't get it. It's, this whole... How honest do I want to be with you guys? Th this whole social media thing, like Brent didn't even tag me, Brendan the big old p***y shop, crying emoji... Here, here's, here's, here's how I feel about it. This is just internet gossip, right? This gets him trending. He doesn't have a lot going on. Didn't get paid for the Masvidal fight. Probably doesn't know what he's going to do next. 
Um, Connor, he's probably waiting on that. Connor's tied up with the TV right deal, so he's probably banking on that. He fought Masvidal, lost to Jake Paul, right? That's a big blow to his ego. Um, so I, I guess he needs to do this to stay current. I retired 15 years ago, man. That being said, that's social media. This isn't real. Because here's what's real. I will f*** you up. That's real. I'm not asking for this. I don't want to f*** him up. I'm not trying to f*** him up. End of the day, if he walked in right now, I said, Chin, Case, can you guys leave? Only one of us is going to walk out unscathed, and it's me. Every f***ing day of the week, 365 days a year, I will snap his f***ing neck. I know, I know, I know. What is this f***ing area code? 209? I know, 209. Mm, I get all that. Very cool. None of that is real. Oh, but he did great against Donald Cerrone. Did you see him? Leon Edwards. I get, dude, he's had some great fights. Tough dude. I don't give a f**k. I'm 245 pounds, trained black belt, top 10 UFC heavyweight in the world at one point. I'm not out of shape. I'm a f**king beast when it comes down to, I know, I tell jokes, I do crazy sh**. I've made some mistakes. Oh, I, he got knocked out by Nogueira. Oh, he's into trucks. I'm, I get all that. Firing the kids, silly dude. I get all that. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, the way this works, I'm not a civilian like the rest of his goons around him. I'm not this fake gangster. I don't go looking for fights. I know I'm tough. I don't have to get on Twitter and blast it out and prove it every day because I'm insecure because whatever shit he has going on with his childhood trauma. I don't have to do that. At the end of the day, I will twist your fucking neck off. Ask your boys. There's many of guys that you fucks with that I've rolled with. Ask them how it went. Go ahead and ask them. Very close guys to you. Ask them how it went, but that's real. This isn't real. Oh, man, that was fucking poetry. A-grade podcast cringe slop. Straight from the deep fryers. Thank him. Let's just quickly recap the highlights because that was jam-packed. What the fuck is unscathed? Is that some sort of jujitsu move that Rogan taught him in the Mothership Green? Oh, hang on. No, don't worry about that. Scratch that. What about Brendan's incredible ability to have a full conversation with himself? He's so good at it that he can anticipate what the other person would theoretically be saying. According to your boy, this is what Nate Diaz would be saying if he was there. Brendan tells jokes, he's made some mistakes, but he's also into trucks, he has a podcast, The Fighter and the Kid, and he's a silly dude. Bro, what? No, 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 wait. This takes the cake. There's many of guys that you fucks with. Oh man, that's unbelievable. Seriously, what did we do to deserve this? Christmas came early this year, boys. It came early. Except we're not done yet. Because as usual, it got worse. The difference between you and I, if you start crying because your brother who has CT... The difference between you and I is if your brother, and Shane's a brother to me, if your actual fucking brother came out and started getting emotional, or if you started coming out and getting emotional about your brother's issues with CT and fighting and all this because we know he has his issues, I would support you, even though you've been a dick to me the entire time. A few moments later. The elephant in the room is guys do have some issues. Not everybody. I'm not saying everybody. I feel like I don't. I don't know if you do. I'm not getting get on here and make fun of you. None of that shit. I don't even know if your brother actually has it either. He has some issues. I don't know if it's from that. I don't, I don't know you guys well enough. But what I do know is you're not going to do shit. That I can guarantee you. So after Bapa cooled down a bit, he tried to backpedal Nick Diaz having CTE. Amazing. How does he do it? We'll never know. But then he ramped up again. Seriously, this is the last clip I'm going to play for you guys before I explain what's really going on here, in my opinion. But Brendan went on for almost 20 minutes uninterrupted. Like, dude, that's fucking wild. That is not normal, B. Imagine you're some random who clicked on his video and started watching, and this is what you saw. It's all fake, but... You're not fooling anybody. I've seen how the sausage is made. You're not tough to me. I know tough guys. Tough guys don't get on the internet and tweet at another grown fucking man who beat the shit out of them when they're crying or they're getting emotional because their friend of 20 fucking years is having major issues, suicidal thoughts. That's pretty. That's the difference between you and I. 
I'm not some moron who buys into your tough guy narrative, bud. I don't give a f you're from Sacramento. That's your biggest thing? That's it? That's the narrative? I know tough guys from Sacramento. What are you going to do, Nate? What are you going to do? Volume punch me, motherfucker? That's what you're going to do? What are you going to do? Out grapple me? In what fucking sense? What world are you living in? This is the real world. And you can show up with all your boys, do all that stuff. But what a real man will do is pull up one-on-one. -on -one. I don't have a posse. I don't need one, bud. I'll drop my kid off at fucking practice, roll over, twist your fucking neck off, and then pick him up just in time unscathed with a Diet Coke. <laughs> if you wanted to make me laugh, Papa, you got me. But can someone explain to me what suicidal thoughts are? Is that like a depressed Instagram model? And did you see his neck in those clips? Jeez, man, talk about bricking up. Anyway, let's just calm down for a minute because this is where I wanted to get to. Here's the thing. You know, at the beginning when I was listing a few of Brendan's failures, how he can't stop catching L's, the bottom line is that I don't think he's in a good place. He's super emotional. He's having hot flushes. I mean, he was almost rage crying over a tweet from Nate Diaz. That is so fucking wild, man. Imagine being a 41-year-old dude with three kids sitting down and yelling into a camera for 20 minutes over a tweet. Seriously, six words and an emoji. All of this shit he's gone through over the years has taken its toll on him. That's why I don't think any of this had to do with CTE awareness or putting Nate Diaz in his place. Brendan's just a wreck. He needs to stop and get help and get as far away from a camera as possible. The worst part is though, people were egging him on in the comment section. This is the we like this side of Shaw button. It's about time Brendan started sticking up for himself. I like this version of Shaw. Fucking right. Well said, Brendan. That's good Brendan finally stood up for himself. I wish he responded to everyone like this. It's about time Brendan starts to push back. Now, most of those were probably paid bots. It's strange to have that many likes, but not many replies. And don't get me wrong. I said this at the beginning. Brendan's probably right. He would probably fold Nate in half if it came down to it in a one-on-one -on -one situation. I mean, Bubba's a big dude, but I think these meltdowns that he keeps having could get a lot worse if he doesn't get off the internet. He is way too sensitive for this shit. And I hate to be the one to say this, but he seems dangerously unstable. He's got all the embarrassment from the lol suit, being caught lying on his podcast and forced by his lawyers to sign a document admitting that he lied and that he knows everything that's going on. Every month, it's something new with this guy. And when the money finally stops coming in... Yeah, I don't want to think about the headspace he'll be in. So I'm happy to have a laugh at his on-air meltdowns with you guys, but beneath the surface, there's definitely some shit that needs to be addressed there. And the first step, in my opinion, is for him to just get off the internet and start rebuilding his life. Anyway, make sure you guys go and check out the link in the description to my Patreon if you're interested in my longer form uncensored content. There's plenty of other stuff on there covering Rogan, Kill Tony, various lol suits, as well as other bits and pieces, and it's just a great way to support the channel. While you're here though, hit the subscribe button and make sure you give me a thumbs up if you ended up liking this video. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you in the next one. That's crazy. Why do the 5k, the two bears 5k? Uh, I don't know, they invited me to, I forgot. Oh. <laughs> CD. Straight up forgot. <laughs>